In this video, we're going to take a quick look at a very common application of the law of cosines, and that is to uh, determine the distance between a couple of objects uh, that we know, you know, which direction they're traveling um, and the speed at which they're traveling there. So if we can uh, determine those things, we can kind of use our law of cosines to help us determine the distance between them after a given amount of time has passed. And so um, let's read this one together here. Uh, and kind of try to wrap our heads around it and look at how we could use a law of cosines to assist us in determining this distance that we want to find. So it says that two planes leave the same airport at 10 a.m. The first plane travels at a speed of 350 miles per hour and has a compass bearing of uh, north 80 degrees west. The second plane travels at a speed of 400 miles per hour and has a compass bearing of south 45 degrees east. So what we want to find is the distance between these two planes after 1 p.m. So um, I will tell you that uh, we're going to start by kind of conceiving of the situation, drawing the triangle to maybe represent this here, um, but then really look at uh, some other kind of special things that we want to pay attention to. So first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a point right here, and this is going to serve as one of my vertices on my triangle, and this is really just my, my airport. So remember, anytime we use compass bearings, we like to put these big dotted north-south lines through it, um, and usually kind of a, a, a tinier east-west line that goes through this also. But this kind of help us kind of understand what direction we're heading here if we know um, how many degrees east or west we're going from, north or south. So our first plane, what do we know about our first plane? Well, it was traveling in a, a compass bearing of north 80 degrees west uh, at 350 miles per hour. So if we look at north 80 degrees west, where might that lie in the scheme of things here? Well, that means go north and rotate 80 degrees towards the west. It would almost look like maybe this right here. And so I'm going to put in uh, maybe like a, I suppose I'll put a little arrow here to indicate this direction and distance. But what we do want to make sure we put on here is this, this 80 degree rotation right here. So we've rotated 80 degrees towards the west from north and I made it about this long here. Now our second plane had a compass bearing of south 45 degrees east um, and it was traveling 400 miles per hour. So one thing that I'm going to do here is south 45 degrees east. I know that's kind of splitting the difference between south and east here. I'm going to make this look longer than the line I did on my first side there because this plane is traveling just a little bit faster than that first plane. So it kind of gives me a sense of scale here. And we're also going to make sure that we put in our angle, bing bing, right here. This is a 45 degree angle right here. Cool, man. So, um, you know, when we talk about, okay, here's kind of what these planes are doing. Determine the distance between these two planes at 1 p.m., you can kind of see that if I were to say my first plane would be about right here, my second plane would be about right here, well then the distance between these two planes after a given amount of time is kind of this distance right here. And I'm going to label this with just a, a lowercase d to kind of indicate that this is the distance we're looking for. So um, this actually is something that is, is very easy to find using the law of cosines. The only stipulation is that we have to have a, a side angle side case. That is to say, I need to know what the length of this side is, I need to know what the length of this side is, and I need to know the angle between these two sides right here. Okay. So we're going to play a little bit of detective, and the first thing I want to kind of have you guys kind of conceive of, or, or write down maybe, is understand that these two distances right here, remember from your seventh grade science class, distance is rate times time. So we were given some rates here, some miles per hour speeds, but we were also kind of implicitly given time. We were told that these planes left at 10 a.m. and we want to know the distance at 1 p.m. So when we talk about what's the interval of time here, that means that there were three hours worth of time, three hours, and then our rates, well, our, our rate one here, our first plane was 350 mph. Our second plane, R2, our rate two, is would be our 400 mph. So what this means is on these kinds of problems that you see, we tend to have to do this. We have to say, well, what's this distance here? Well, it's, it's three hours times 350 miles per hour. And this distance over here, well, you know, what is this distance here? Well, this is three hours times 400 miles per hour. So what we tend to get here is, or at least what we're going to get in this case is three times 1400. This is a 1200 mile gap, okay? You would have gone 400 miles every hour for three hours. And this right here, three times 350, what is that? Nine, you know, plus another 150, 900 plus another 150. So 1,050 miles. So in terms of playing detective on the side lengths here, we're always gonna be able to find this using distances rate times time. As far as the angle goes between these, well, we also have to play detective using our compass bearings here. But we know that if this was 80 degrees west of north, well, that kind of leaves behind like a, a 10 degree measurement right here, uh, left to go over to get all the way to west. And we know that this right here is 90 degrees, and we know that this right here is 45 degrees. So if we were to look at this as just like some angle sums, I'll get my calculator here, I'm going to slide this over. Um, I could really add that extra 10 degrees plus the 90 degrees there, 
plus the 45 degrees, and I suppose we get 145 degrees. So this, this whole angle right here is 145 degrees. Now, we draw this preliminary drawing always just to kind of get the main idea down, but remember that we always kind of excuse me, resketch your triangle because it's a little bit easier to work with triangles that just have A's, B's, and C's on the outsides, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of come over here. I'm going to say, hey, look, you know, this is kind of looks like my situation over here, and I'll try to make this look a little bit better here. So I got this really flat angle here, and I got this 45 down here, and, and I've got this distance I'm trying to find here. So let's label out what we know. We know this is 1,050 miles. We know that this is 1,200 miles. Okay. And we know that this angle right here is 145 degrees. So the only thing we kind of have left to do is decide arbitrarily what we want to label these things. Okay, so I'm going to just just for fun here, you know, maybe we do this. I'm going to call this A, this one B, and I kind of have a, a knack for putting C as the biggest if I can help it. So we'll call this capital C, which means this is lowercase c here. This must be across from lowercase uh, or uppercase B, this must be lowercase b, and across from uppercase A, this must be lowercase a. So if we're going to tackle this using the law of cosines um, or, or law of sides, anytime we're solving a triangle, we ought to organize our information into a table here and kind of look at it as what do we know and what do we want to find and, and go from there. So what do we know? Well, we know B is 1050. We know that little a is 1200, two, zero, zero, and we know that capital C is 145 degrees here. So the first thing I notice is that when I want to find this distance here, which is this lowercase c is what we're after. Remember, this is our, our distance between our planes was this side. Um, I'm not going to be able to use the law of sines to do it because I don't yet have a side angle pair or, or, or a pair of letters, lowercase and uppercase, that I know both of them at the same time. So that's where our law of cosines comes in. And then the other part of this is just recognizing that it is the little c that we want here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out my law of cosines up here. Um, and this is something you can go back and check your sheet for. But if I'm looking for little c, I'm going to choose the formula that starts with little c. So we have c squared. It must mean that the right side is a squared plus b squared. Remember that we always have minus 2 times the same two side lengths that we use here and here, but times the cosine of the angle across from this little c that we started with here. So if this is the formula we're going to use, kind of put this into perspective. We know, we know little a and little b, so we know these values here. And we know capital C. Guys, this is going to be a straight up plug and chug. We just kind of had to conceive of the situation here. So I'm going to carry my work down here, slide down a little bit here, and we'll say that really I want c squared. And, and you know, it's just best practice to put in uh, parentheses, blank parentheses, whenever you do substitutions. But we would have something that looks like this. And so I suppose our a, kind of, kind of try to squeeze this in here, 1050, uh, 1050. And then our b was 1200. I'm trying to write real small here for us. And then our angle was 145 degrees. So what this comes down to then is just a, a calculator situation. We need a value here. And I just like to type these in as is. So we've got 1050, I'm going to hit my squared key, plus 1200 zero, zero squared, minus 2, I'll put parentheses around my 1050, 1050. And I'll put parentheses around my 1, 2, 0, 0. And then we'll throw our cosine in here. And, and of course, you would want to make sure that you're in degrees mode. We're telling our calculator it's 145 degrees. All of this can go in at the same time. It's kind of nice. And it's the nice thing about law of cosines. We get 460676. So we get c squared is approximately 460676. I know there was one more digit before a decimal here. So 3. So 3.152-ish. Right, And then not forgetting that we need to take the square root of this here. And so uh, if you've still got it up on your calculator, man, we can just go ahead and hit square root. And it's convenient to just say of my last answer here. Okay, And so we get about 2146.33. So we're going to say C is about 2146.33. And of course, we were measuring a distance here. So we want to use our proper units here, so miles. And so you know, looking at the situation, if I were to put a 2146-ish miles, okay, and I wouldn't round it off to the nearest hole, but I mean 0.33 miles. Would it be reasonable? It would be entirely reasonable because these planes weren't really flying kind of in a similar direction. They were flying kind of opposite directions here. And so you're going to see that um, that must be a bigger distance and, and the biggest distance on our triangle here. So I'm going to ask you guys to, to take the same situation, set it up, and, and solve one on your own here. But it's something that I, I thought was worth looking at together before I have you try some of these law of cosines on your own. Cheers.